One of the most common questions I get asked is the following. Do I need to indicate to overtake parked cars? The answer is yes, sometimes you do, but sometimes you don't. It will always depend on the situation. And in this video, I'm going to explain some scenarios where you should and where you shouldn't indicate to overtake parked cars. If you like the sound of this and you find the videos useful, then why not support me by PayPal or Revolut if you wish. Links in the description and in the first pinned comment. Okay, so the blue car is the car that's going to overtake the yellow and the red car. Uh, these are parked. Yellow is parked, red is parked. Now the key question is, you have to ask yourself as a learner driver, are you crossing the center white line? Is any part of your car going to cross the center white line? If the answer is yes, then you should indicate. If the answer is no, then you shouldn't. So for example, if the cars are well in off the road like this and you would not have to um, go over the center white line, then there's no need to indicate here. But because these cars here are just out a little bit more like that, you're definitely going to have to be crossing the white line to overtake them safely and leave a one meter distance or a door length distance. So in this particular scenario, it is certainly a good idea to indicate because you're crossing the white line. And even if there's no white line, because you know road markings are gonna vary from road to road. If there's no white line, then you have to visualize where would the white line be if there was one there. So you have to think of the center point in the road, the center point between here and here. And if you think you're crossing that center point, then yes, you should indicate to let other people know what your intentions are. And it's important to know that um, when you indicate, it doesn't give you any special priority, it doesn't give you any right of way, it's just letting people know what your intentions are. It's a kind of a form of courtesy, I suppose. And another very common question that comes from this topic is, how long should we leave the indicator on? Should we leave it on all the way up here? Should we indicate for the yellow car and the red car or just the yellow car? Well, here's the answer, okay? Let's say you have two parked cars like that, okay? As I said to you a moment ago, the indicator is just letting people know what your future plans or intentions are. So what, so what I'm saying is once you're out in the middle where you said you were going to be when you indicated, that's the time to turn it off, okay? So when the blue car is about here, okay? Let's say the front of the blue car is level with the back of the yellow car or the first parked car in the line that is. That's the time to turn it off. It may go off itself, it may self-correct, or you might have to just gently tap the indicator down to switch it off. Because once you're in this position here, you're in exactly the position that you said you were going to be back here. So by leaving it on for a prolonged period of time as you drive along here is not necessary. Um, it's bad driving because it could be misleading. You could be telling people that you're going to park on the right further up or that you're taking a right turn further up. So we don't want any misleading signals. Now, speaking of misleading signals, it's important to pay close attention um, to what I'm about to say. In this scenario here, it might have been fine for you to have overtaken the yellow car, but then you have to remember the parked cars are on your side of the road, so you might have to yield to any oncoming cars that could be coming here. So you might be okay to overtake the yellow car and then you have a gap to come in then to yield if there is any cars coming here. Now it's very important that when you're coming back in like this that you do not indicate left to come back in because that again would be misleading. People might think that you're parking on the left and then any drivers behind you could be thinking that you're stopped or parked and they may actually try and overtake you. So don't indicate left but just before you stop um, indicate to the right, try to be a little bit right of center to give yourself a good position and indicate right again. And you're indicating right to let people behind you know that you're not stopped permanently, that you're not parked, that your intention, and remember it's only your intention, is to move out once it's safe to do so. So no indicating in to the left um, if you're coming in after the yellow car because that could be misleading and you don't want to give misleading signals to cars that could be following you here. And then once it's safe to move out here, you would move out. And again, uh, once the front of your car is level, give or take, with the back of the red car, that's the time to turn it off. As I said to you earlier, you don't want people to think you're turning right up ahead. And then let's say, for example, the red car is the last parked car and you're going to come back in on your own side of the road then. Well, in that case, then again, there's no need to indicate left back in, okay? Because again, people might think that you're 
taking a left turn if there is one further up or they might think that you're parking so generally speaking um in towns in housing estates things like that there's no need to indicate left when you're coming back in after the last car because in ireland we drive on the left so our natural position is to gravitate towards the left anyway so the fact that you're already out on the road and you're coming back in is enough of a signal to let people know that you're moving back in okay as I said, it, it will always depend on the situation, and that's what I'm gonna talk about next. There may be a few exceptions to this, so let's talk about those. If you are on a motorway like this, or a dual carriageway, or some kind of urban roads where there's two or three lanes in town, then it will be very important then to indicate left um, if you're moving back into the left lane. Because in this scenario here, like a dual carriageway or a motorway, you may well, uh, you will, sorry, or indicate to overtake the truck, okay? And then when you're, say, level with the truck, give or take here, you would turn it off. And then when you're a good distance up here and you want to come back into the left end, you would definitely check your mirrors and middle mirror and left side mirror and indicate to come back into the left lane. But that's a different scenario, you see. This is like a motorway, a dual carriageway or some kind of multi-lane traffic on a one-way system or something like that. What I'm talking about earlier on was if you're in a housing estate with lots of left turns up ahead, you don't want to indicate left coming back in then. And this is why we don't indicate left um, when moving back in in town, at least not usually anyway. Because as you can see here, if the red car indicates left just to move back into the left lane, it would be a misleading signal. This car would think that this car is taking a left here and this car might pull out, thereby causing an incident. So what the red car here should do is Indicate to the right because they're crossing the white line. Um, be wary of clearance. Don't get too close to the back or the side of the car. Turn off the indicator when you're beside the blue car here, where the picture illustrates it. And then just check your middle and left mirror. Move back in gradually once it's safe to do so. But don't indicate back into the left because this guy might think you're turning in there. The only reason you'd indicate to the left is if you were, in fact, taking a left turn here. That's the only reason, otherwise it could be dangerous and misleading. So I hope this video helped to clear up some uncertainties around parked cars. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. I'll be back very soon with another video, and until then, Slán Gafol.